Hello, seniors. I'm glad you are all still here listening to an exciting lesson related to life science. I'm Mom De La Sorina, and I'll be presenting to you today's amazing lesson. Are you excited? So do I. So let's make the most out of our class time. Learn while having fun. Seniors, our lesson today, the unifying themes in the study of life. At the end of this module, you should be able to name the unifying themes in the study of life, describe the unifying themes illustrated, explain the connection among living things and their interaction with the environment, give details on how these themes serve as the foundation in the study of biology, and value life by taking good care of all beings, human, plants, and animals. The study of life in general is very wide, and to help us understand this vastness are what we call themes. Themes are distinct characteristics, pattern, and or quality. To help us understand better the study of life, we can look at themes individually and as a collective. In this way, we can easily digest the commonalities of those exhibiting life. The unifying themes in the study of life are organization, information, energy and matter, interactions, and evolution. The study of organisms ranges from macro to micro or vice versa. This means that the study of life can be from the planet Earth as a planet that can host life to the molecular level that comprises that life. The good thing, however, is that these large chunks of concept can be broken into smaller ones. Let us explore quickly these levels. First up, we have the levels of biological organization. Let's start with molecules. This refer to chemical structures that are composed of two or more atoms. Second, Organelles. These are parts of the cell which are responsible for function and integrity. Some are membrane-bound while others are not. 3. Cells. These are the basic working and structural unit of an organism. Different cells work in different organs. They are structured according to function. Organisms can either be single-celled or multicellular in nature. Fourth, tissues. These are simply cells grouped together and perform a specialized function. Five is organ. This is a body part or a part of an organism which is made up of a group of tissues. An organ functions specifically in a body. Number six, organism. This refers to the individual living species. Each thriving plant or animal is an organism. Seven, populations. This refers to all individuals of a species living in a specific area. Let us take, for example, a population of crops living in a coastal area. 8. Communities. These are the variety of species inhabiting a specific area. An example would be a coastal community. In this community, we would expect to see a variety of animal and plant species that thrives in coastal areas. Thus, a community is a combination of different populations. 9. Ecosystems. This refers to the biotic and abiotic factors in an area. This includes not only the interaction between living things, but also the interaction between living and non-living. 10. Is biosphere. This consists of all the livable parts of the earth. By livable, we are referring to all spaces which is inhabited by life. This includes spaces in land, 
water, and air. Did you find the levels of biological organization easy or difficult to memorize? Well, if you are having a hard time to recite them one by one, let me help you. For us to remember the 10 levels of biological organization, let's memorize this mnemonics device. Mysterious obese cat talk, opening oranges, and people catch easy breaks. Consider the first letter of each word. We will try to think of the mentioned levels that start with that letter. Let's try it. M is the first letter of mysterious, so it denotes molecules. O is for organelles. C for cell. T, tissue. O is the first letter of the word opening, so that means organ or organ system. O again, organisms, for such a word. P for people is population, catch, C, community, E is for ecosystem, and B is for biosphere. Please take note of these mnemonics. I really hope this could help you. Another theme to help us understand the study of biology is information. All living things have to deal with the transfer and expression of genetic information. Inside cells, chromosomes exist and inside chromosomes are genetic material in the form of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Recall in your grade 8, you learned about the two mechanisms in cell division, mitosis and meiosis. Before each process happens and or is completed, the very first thing that occurs is the replication of genetic materials. The replication or copying of the DNA is to ensure that the daughter cells will receive the same complete set of chromosomes with that of the parent cell. This DNA will then contain sections called genes. The replication of the DNA prior to cell division will eventually be the template for the trillions of cells that will make up an organism. The structure of the DNA is responsible for its ability to store information. It is a double helix of strands of building blocks called nucleotides. It is composed of phosphate, pentose or sugar, deoxyribose sugar in case of the DNA, and base. The nitrogenous bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, aptly abbreviated as A, T, C, and G respectively. The different sequence of these four bases accounts for the encoding of information in the DNA. Think of it this way. The way we arrange the alphabet to form words is in a way like how these nucleotides are sequenced for encoding information. The sequencing provides for a blueprint for most genes to make proteins. In turn, these proteins account for different function in the body and in different organism. Like for example, a single cold gene may specifically create a protein that will be able to break down a carbohydrate molecule, while a human gene may specify a protein to act as an antibody to help fight off infections. The protein production is controlled indirectly through another related molecule, the RNA, or the ribonucleic acid. The RNA, or ribonucleic acid, in this process serves as an intermediary. The nucleotide sequence along a gene is transcribed into an mRNA, then translated into the building blocks of protein amino acids. The amino acid in this case is a linked series. After completed, they form a specific protein with a unique shape and function.
this whole process where the information in a gene guides to create a cellular product is called gene expression. Again, it starts with replication, then transcription, then translation, or from DNA to RNA to protein synthesis. A characteristic common to all forms of life is the need for energy. This is a requirement for organisms to perform life processes. The various indicators of life and processes like growing, reproducing, moving, and other intracellular processes require that the organisms spend energy. The sun is the primary source of energy in the environment. All organisms rely on the sun's energy input to survive. It provides energy on Earth in the form of light and is received and utilized by the autotrophs or producers. These autotrophs or producers are photosynthetic organisms, meaning these organisms are able to harvest sunlight to create their own food. The photosystems harvest light and together with raw materials like carbon dioxide and water, it converts light energy into chemical energy. This process is called photosynthesis. The chemical energy in the form of food molecules will then be passed by plants and other photosynthetic organisms to other organisms that are not able to produce their own food. Note that there is already energy transfer happening in this process. The organisms receiving the energy from producers are called consumers. When an organism uses energy to perform work or certain processes such as cell division or pumping of blood from the heart to circulation, some of the energy use is lost in the environment in the form of heat. In a nutshell, energy in an ecosystem flows through in one direction, enters as light, and exits as heat, and in contrast, chemicals used are recycled. The chemicals that the plant absorbs from the soil and water is incorporated into the plant body, then later pass on to the animal that eats the plant. Eventually, these chemicals will then be returned into the environment by the composers like bacteria that breaks down dead matter. These chemicals will then be taken up by the soil usually and is ready to be again absorbed by the plants. Do you still remember the organizational hierarchy presented in the beginning of this lesson? Well, from the molecular level to the ecosystem and to the biosphere in general, interaction is important. Interaction's collegiate definition in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is the mutual or reciprocal action or influence. In biology, interaction at every level of hierarchy is important as it ensures smooth operation and combination of parts to function. This is very much evident in the interaction of molecules in the cell and in the parts or components of the ecosystem. When we talk about the lower levels of hierarchy in biology, we are referring to the interactions that make up the organism. This means molecule level up to the organ level. The interaction in the lower levels of hierarchy is important for operations of certain regulations. Let us take, for example, the regulation of waste materials in the body, particularly carbon dioxide. The body needs to keep the levels of carbon dioxide in the lungs low so that it can easily diffuse from the blood to the lungs and excreted via exhaling. This process alone allows for a lot of interaction in between organs, cells, tissues, and molecules. This ability to self-regulate is made possible by a mechanism we call feedback. 
In an ecosystem, we see interaction at a macro level. Every organism interacts with other organisms and with the abiotic environment or non-living things as well. The grass blade, for example, can be eaten by a grasshopper and in turn is eaten by a frog. The frog is then eaten by snake and is eaten by an owl. The owl, when it dies, will then undergo breakdown with the help of decomposers. And materials from the decomposition, like molecules, will then be absorbed by the soil. You see, interactions like this ensures that the ecosystem continues to thrive through having a regulated function. Evolution, as the fifth theme, is a much debated topic in the past. But with standing scientific evidences, evolution has stood its ground and became a field. Evolution, by characteristic, is the scientific thought which states that the organisms of today are the modified descendants of their ancestors in the past. Evolution is said to be the scientific thought that would explain or make sense of all the organisms now. Fossil records show that organisms have been evolving for billions of years now and that this accounts for the vast diversity and variation of organisms in the past and present. Fossil records also show evidences of unity aside from variation. There are animals presently that may seem different from one another. Let's take for example, the arm of a human being, wing of the bat, leg of a cat, and flipper of a whale. They might have different uses, but their underlying anatomy are similar to one another. They considered homologous structures. This suggests that these organisms are from a common ancestor. One notable evolutionary view emerged in the 1800s when the father of evolution, or Charles Darwin, published the book The Origin of Species. This book contains Charles Darwin's studies and observations, which express two main points. One, that contemporary species arose from a succession of ancestors that differed from them. This is what we call descent with modification and accounts for the dual nature of life's unity and diversity. Second, that natural selection is the primary reason of descent with modification. Natural selection sprung from Darwin's observations from his studies. It states that species with inherited traits are more adaptive to the environment, which means they are more likely to survive and reproduce than those who are not. This is because the environment constantly selects for the production of traits from the random variant traits naturally occurring within a population. That was an amazing lesson, isn't it? I hope you learned a lot in today's topic. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to take care of yourself by staying at home. See you again next time, and goodbye.